Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good uh, evening, maybe good night to some of you. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon with us, or yeah, this morning or evening. Uh, I can see that you really are from all over the world, Greece, Romania, Hungary. Many of you are from actually from Romania, UAE, Turkey, Egypt, US. Yeah, it must be quite early for you. Germany, Moldova. So thank you so much for being here. Honduras, well, that's, uh, that's one of the most special locations. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, while we are waiting for a couple of more minutes to, for everyone to join, uh, let me ask you if you've ever participated at any Booker class uh, webinars. We are interested to hear if you've seen us before, if we've met you, uh, or if, uh, if you maybe already know uh, the product. Saudi, Syria, Denmark, hi, Egypt, this is your first time, that's very good, this is going to be a great um, introductory session uh, to Booker class and also to storytelling, uh, many first timers here, very, very good, well, we really hope that you're not going to be disappointed, uh, we prepared a lot with the girls, so I think let's get started. Uh, so I am your host today. Let me introduce myself. My name is Anna Baldock, and I've been working for Booker Kids for more than seven years. Uh, so I've been through a lot uh, with the product. I was working as a pro pro project manager in international partnerships, and then we started creating Booker Class with Kinga and Domi also uh, here at the webinar, I think five years ago. At the moment, I am responsible for customer success and the role of me and my team is to understand your motivations, your needs, and to understand how to make our uh, partners, clients, users happier and more fulfilled using Booker Class. And I really wanted to make this afternoon more hands-on, more practical, while also having uh, the expert side to it. So that's why I, uh, I invited two of my colleagues from the educational team, Dominic Cagliani and Kinga Kramer. So please, girls, introduce yourselves. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Anna, for the introduction. It is really impressive to see how many participants we have already. So that's a really good uh, motivation for me already. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all for joining us today. My name is Dominika Diani. I'm a psychologist and the head of education at uh, the company. My goal in this role is to make sure that everything we create, whether it's a new uh, app, update or a new story book we create uh, or a game meets the highest educational standards we want this solution to be easy to use highly educative but also super fun and engaging so this is what i put all my efforts in uh, nowadays kinga hi everyone my name is kinga kramer and i'm an english teacher right now in upper primary school and a learning and curriculum designer and materials writer at Booker class. Uh, it's been, yeah, five years mm -hmm. since we started working together. And I've been responsible for the um, structure of the library and the quality of the books and the follow-up games and the extra materials from the educational and uh, practical um, side from the teachers and from the schools. Great, thank you so much uh, for both of you. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we are definitely going to dig deeper into the benefits of storytelling, especially in early childhood development in early years and in language teaching and English teaching specifically. Uh, we are going to take a look at how to pick the right books for your students and for your classes. Uh, and how Booker class can maybe help you captivating your students in these English classes and how you can implement the books into your teaching. Uh, it sounds quite miraculous that we're going to fit into this short time, but we are going to try our best. And we've already received many, many questions from you on in the registration sheets. We try to incorporate the answers uh, to these questions in, the, in our presentation. Uh, so listen uh, to us because we are hopefully going to answer these questions. Uh, however, if you have anything else, then we are super happy to have more of these questions. 
So feel free to use the chat box for it. We are going to take a look and keep an eye on it. Oh, also, we have a QA. and a uh, Very good. Uh, thank you for, uh, for using that. So feel free to use both of them. And at the end, we're definitely going to have 10, 15 minutes to answer the questions. And now let's get started. Uh, I want to start with talking a bit about the benefits of stories. Uh, in language teaching, as well as in early childhood development, Kinga, as an English teacher, can you tell us why storytelling is important in English language teaching? Yes, well, uh, first of all, stories in general uh, play a very important role in education in general, because actually we've been learning through stories for forever. Uh, and it is our cultural heritage to teach with the help of stories and personal accounts. So this is why this format is very comfortable for everyone and very familiar. So using this storytelling session, using this format makes learning much more easier, much more natural. It is actually inside us to um, acquire as much as we can from the stories. Uh, from a language teacher's point of view, uh, I would say that uh, stories in English are authentic input because they use natural language. The texts usually have a flow and um, it really gives examples for the natural speech and it always incorporates the grammar and the vocabulary that is um, needed even in a native context. So there is no real difference between a native and a language learner uh, point of view when it comes to teaching with stories. Mm -hmm. It's rather the difficulty of the text, but not mm -hmm. the quality, fortunately. Yes, definitely. Thank you. And to be honest, my favorite part about teaching with stories is that it's not only about the language and the language acquisition process, but it's so much more. It's really that through stories, you can engage the kids, you can make them empathize with characters, you can teach them about different cultures, different traditions, or you can even bring in more sensitive topics uh, to the education. Yes, exactly. So when we started to create the books, we were focusing on the language teaching aspects. We were uh, using the the basic nursery rhymes, what you can find in every uh, school curriculum. We created new content focusing on specific grammar. But then that there was one point when we realized that, wow, stories are so powerful, we can do much more with them. So we can utilize the power of stories to have a more holistic approach to education. So actually, if we're talking about these topics, we included a lot of books that are showcasing some everyday life problems, for example, uh, having sibling jealousy or uh, being diagnosed with uh, gluten allergy or this very basic stuff that we encounter or how to deal with bullying in school, for example. These are really important topics. And if we can sneak those topics into language teaching, I think that we can uh make so much more than just teach them the, the english language itself absolutely thank you uh so much and uh booker is actually just about to publish a trend report about the latest educational trends that i feel like it's, it's all connected to what we were discussing already uh latest educational trends like technology integration global citizenship education uh okay. culturally responsive teaching or clil content and language integrated learning what do you think? How do these appear in Booker class and in your work? I think the reason why this whole global citizenship thing became such a big thing in education is because our world is more connected than ever. In this society of social media users, people are making friends online. We know a lot of people from abroad, even though if we don't know them personally, we are aware of them. Uh, we work online, we even date online, I mean, some of us. Uh, so we want to uh, make our kids to understand that there's a lot going on beyond their own backyards and we want them to respect and appreciate people from different cultures. Uh, if we cannot 
make them to meet people from other different backgrounds, what can we do? We can educate them about uh, other cultures through stories. So what we do in Booker class is we like to pick stories from all over the world. It can be folk tales or modern stories about uh, cultural celebrations and habits, or it can be just a, a regular daily routine of someone who lives uh, on the completely other side of the world. Mm -hmm. Plus, when we are thinking about uh, global citizenship as such. It's also helping them feel like they belong somewhere, they can make a difference. Uh, we can encourage them to work towards a, a world that is fair, uh, peaceful, that is really important nowadays. It uh, takes care of our planet. So for example, climate crisis and the uh, climate issues and possible solutions are also part of our library. So you can find content on this as well. So as you can, you can see, we really want to put all kinds of content that will contribute to uh, educating the whole child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's quite closely more or less related to CLIL as well, because so you mentioned a lot of topics that you cover. Uh, I mean, we cover with the books, uh, but CLIL is doing kind of the same, but still a bit differently. Yeah, it's very really special, actually, because um, I wouldn't go into much detail, but I can only cite the content and language integrated framework itself, the four C's, like that it involves uh, the content itself, which is exciting. It is something very informative for the students. If it's about physics, if, if it's about a piece of news, if it's about a historical event. So we have something extra uh, which is not usually in the English lesson itself. So we have uh, engaging content. We have the communication part, that's the second C, because the English language is the input. Then we have culture here as well, uh, because the different texts, the different news, the different content we include uh, really uh, contributes to get to know the world around us, to educate ourselves about what is happening and how we can be more responsible and why it is important to gain knowledge of such ideas. And the last one is cognition, which um, is again something we cannot um, forget about as uh, the 21st century skills, soft skills, higher orders thinking skills are gaining more and more importance in uh, even the labor market, but also in education. So uh, when we bring in a story about, uh, for example, uh, a biography of Helen Keller, we teach a lot more than just the words in the text. We teach about culture, we teach about openness, we teach about interpreting and reflecting and understanding the whole situation. So it actually in, uh, incorporates everything we really want to put out there. And uh, another thing which is very uh, wonderful about CLIL is that uh, it makes use of the English language. It's not just a textbook and completing exercises. It's about using the language to gain knowledge so that the students will understand that learning English is worth the pain. <laughs> It mm -hmm. is worth for in for the future as well, because most of us, when we go to university, we work with English speaking sources or we want to watch movies in English in the original um, version without the um, dub. And we want to understand the lyrics. So when we try to step outside of the classroom and bring the word inside to the classroom, it really uh, motivates the students to engage mm -hmm. and to try to push and do more. Thank you. Let me quickly ask our audience, do you, are you familiar with CLIL and are you using this already? Content and language integrated learning. And now I don't see any responses, but no. While you're waiting for some responses. Well, Actually, 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, that most of the textbooks, they build heavily on content and language integrated learning because maybe it's not explicitly there, but I'm sure that in every textbook, you will read about a famous person, a city that is not in your country, uh, some yeah, yeah. social event. Biology some... about uh, interesting animals. Geography, different continents, the weather in different uh, parts of the world. So actually it is there, uh -huh. but you can even uh, emphasize it more and push it even further. Great, thank you. And last but not least, what about culturally responsive teaching? So as, as we already talked about culture, we, we have to educate children about others, but we also uh, have to, or I think we should empower them to talk about their own. So cultural responsive uh, teaching is about making sure that we bring the diverse cultures of our students into the classroom. This might not be relevant for all of you, but for example, me living in Budapest, which is a very big international city, we can have uh, classes with children from different cultural backgrounds. We have migrants, uh, second generation migrants who might speaking uh, Hungarian, for example, but they, they still have their own uh, cultural celebrations and beliefs. So this is really important because when kids see their own culture being valued and celebrated in their learning, it makes a world of difference to them. So it's like saying, hey, how you are or who you are and where you come from matters. And we are curious, we want to know more. So we don't want to put all the kids in one box and telling them uh, what to celebrate or, or how to be, well, to some extent, yeah, we say how to be, behave, but uh, we really have to empower them to, to share about, or about their own traditions because that is a pretty powerful uh, way to learn. So mm -hmm. I think this is something we should also consider. Great. Thank you so much for uh, these were all very valuable uh, perspectives that I think we should all consider. And now moving on to a bit uh, even more practical. Uh, when it comes to an English class, Kinga, you as a teacher, how do you usually choose books and stories for your students? What are the aspects that you usually consider? Right. So um, I really like the content and language integrated books. I also enjoy bringing in some uh, diversity into the classroom, but there are actually four principles that everybody, I think, uh, respects, either consciously or unconsciously, but it's uh, when you choose a book, print or digital, uh, you must pick something that is um, relatable topic-wise so that the students uh, will find it interesting, exciting, useful. Uh, you need to go for illustrations which are engaging, uh, that they enjoy. You need to have a simple plot and an easy to follow storyline. That's especially important when you work with younger ones or um, learners who are not very comfortable with English yet. And last but not least, you should definitely pay attention to the appropriateness of the language. So, and I'm not only saying that don't watch every uh, video on YouTube, I'm rather thinking about the proficiency level. And this is why I find it very uh, wonderful that graded readers are omnipresent now in education so that you can find the perfect level for your students. Because if the book is too complicated, if it is for native learners, it's very difficult to understand them and to enjoy them even so that the students won't have the flow, won't have the experience of reading in English. If it's too easy, it's not motivating because it's for babies. <laughs> so actually, what you need to go for is uh, the language level of your students and slightly a bit more difficult. But of course, there are extra um, criteria if you go for, if you are looking for a specific book, but then I will show you uh, that later. Good, thank you. Actually, we can go on. Uh, let's uh, let's move to a book. We talked a lot about the different perspectives and different uh, aspects of what we take into consideration when creating Booker class. Uh, so let's uh, let's show it to the others. 
Uh, and while Kinka is sharing her screen and you will see the library of Booker class, I wanted to say a few things about it. Uh, so this is the library app that you can see. We are going to talk a bit about the devices, the availability at the end of the session because you asked some questions about it. So you see the library app. It uh, at the moment consists of more than 1000 books uh, that are songs, nursery rhymes, civilizational books, classics, um, uh, activity books, flashcards, and so on. And every book in Booker class, almost every book is graded reader. Uh, so we are aligning everything with CEFR, the Common European Framework of Reference, to make sure that the books are on the right level for the students. The level that Kinga mentioned, you can pick books that are, of course, on the student's level, but you can also pick books that are slightly above the level. So it keeps, uh, it, it stays challenging enough for them. And the levels that you can see from level one to six, we cover uh, content for children between four to 14 years old. So kind of from kindergarten to eighth grade and from beginner to intermediate proficiency levels, meaning from pre-A1 to B1, B2, a CEFR. Yes. And Salish asked this question. So that's the answer. So from kindergarten to eighth grade, you can of course uh, ask, uh, use it slightly below or, uh, or above too. We are going to share the download link to Rana's question, where is that library? Um, so uh, what uh, the other very unique thing about this library, everywhere, everywhere yeah. <laughs> the other unique thing about this library is that uh, um, every single book includes animations, authentic narration, text highlighting, and educational games. So every book offers a scaffolded environment for the kids to, to learn the language naturally, implicitly, without really even noticing it. But let's take a look at a book that Kinga picked for you for today. Yes, yes I picked the one from level one because I think that graded readers are the most difficult to provide for the youngest ones. Uh, so I would like to show you one uh, titled Who Are in the forest and I picked this book for you for several reasons. First of all, uh, I love that it is culturally diverse. You can see that this is a Chinese boy there. Um, so I think that in Europe, it's very important to show the other parts of the world. Uh, I love the message of the story. It is a mindfulness book so that the students just calm down and they uh, learn to appreciate the environment. They uh, can rely on their senses. Uh, and um, it is actually very simple. It's level one. So you will see that the sentences are very short and the language is very simple. The focus is uh, nature vocabulary, but really just a few words so that the students can understand. And everything that is illustrated uh, everything that is in the book is illustrated. So even if the students don't know the word, they can learn by watching the video. And I especially like the sound effect and the narration because it's so calming. I use this with my fourth graders and they were totally calm by the end of the book. So I just um, would like to recommend this one for you. So uh, I'm going to start the book and I think I'm, I won't even talk so that you can enjoy and benefit from it. In the forest. Today I just walk and walk. Listen. Shh. Don't talk. Look at the trees. They're green. Hmm. The air is clean. Sit down. This is our world. What is that? A small bird. It is a big tree. Can it talk to me?
It is a small bee. Can it talk to me? And what's this? It's soft. Hey! A squirrel. It is gray. Don't go. Stay here. What do we hear? The sounds of the forest. This place is the best. Turn the page for some game. So what you could see in this book is a very short poem about mindfulness. I didn't switch off the narration because I wanted you to enjoy, uh, enjoy it in the native um, narration, but you can of course switch off text highlighting and even the narration so that the students can read it and you can start, stop and discuss what they have read or what they can see in the picture. And in that case, the pages won't turn automatically so that you will have the time you need. And all of our books have um, four games in general at the end of the stories. They are all related to the story itself. Uh, there is usually a reading comprehension check, a vocabulary building activity, uh, some uh, grammar practice or communicative uh, task or useful expressions part uh, or listening. And the last activity is usually something um, uh, that wraps up the whole session, something like a cognitive challenge or a fun activity or a drawing, a maze, a puzzle, um, where you can, uh, where all the students can have a feeling of success. So let's see what uh, games we included in this one. What is in the forest? What does Hua see? Match. Tree. B. So you can see that uh, there is a narration when you match uh, the words so that uh, the students will uh, memorize it, uh, memorize the words even more easily. Squirrel. And then you forest. Air. Wonderful. Yeah. You have the immediate feedback. And as you can see, the instructions are very simple. We try to keep it as simple as possible so that uh, all the students can. Uh, do the exercises. Let's see the next one. What does Hua do? Match the pictures and the words. Now this one is the reading comprehension task. You can see that after the 10 pages of the book, uh, the games are here, but if you don't understand the, the task or you don't know the answer, you can simply go back and read that page again. Now, let's see. Here. And it pops back if it's not the here. right one. So that all the students uh, will here. be able to do the exercises. And this is actually a practice. It's not a really an evaluation just yet. It is uh, for learning. Look. The next one. Listen. What does Hua Shh. say? Don't talk. Choose the right picture. Listen. Shh. Don't talk. I like the color green. I like the color green. So this is a listening, please. What is that? A small bird? And last one. Hua likes the forest, but he needs to go home now. Help him. Which is a maze. And you can help Hua get to the other side. So uh, this is what a book 
and all our books look like in the application. Uh, but of course you can extend these activities very easily. Um, this book I used as a follow-up, as a cooling down activity in the classroom. So I didn't add, add any extra ideas, uh, but actually you can start with the cover. You can do a bit of brainstorming of who is who are and what is actually in the forest, what is he doing in the forest. So you can pre-teach even some vocabulary if you feel like uh, your students need them. And while reading, you can stop the pages, reflect on them, ask questions. Uh, and as a follow-up activity, you can encourage your students to write their own uh, mindfulness books. And you can ask them to pick a place where they are staying and then just concentrate on the sounds, on the senses, on the uh, feelings they are having. And then you can work with that even more. So um, this is actually a book uh, that is meaning focused. It means that we want to um, put out a message that taking care of ourselves and listening to the environment and being mindful is extremely important and very, very useful, especially when you feel stressed, when you feel overwhelmed, uh, you just need to stop and just enjoy where you are in the presence. But we have a lot of books that are not meaning focused, but form focused, uh, and that concentrate on a specific vocabulary topic, farm animals, uh, Christmas, um, I don't know, uh, the body parts, and grammar focused books, for example, present simple, past simple, adjectives and adverbs. So right now I'm gonna show you in the teacher's dashboard, how to find these books in our library. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing the application and I'm going to the web browser uh, so that I can show you our teacher dashboard. Um, which is the admin page of the application. So it's a two in one solution, right? We have the application and then we have this platform. I hope you can see that. Um, and when I go to books, Am I lost or did we lose Kinga? I think we lost her. <laughs> so what you can see here is the main student statistic uh, part of our dashboard. You can see some uh, data on your students who read the most in a certain period, uh, how many coins they collected, how many uh, minutes they spent on reading or doing the exercises. Uh, I cannot switch. Maybe I sh maybe we should switch to our screen. What do you think, Anna? Uh, yes, I wanted to, but I couldn't. But now I can. So let me share my screen in a second. And uh, I can uh, tell you what Kinga was doing, <laughs> and hopefully she'll be back. Uh, so in the teacher's dashboard, you can also look for books very efficiently. You can use this search where we have a lot of information like the CFR level, the recommended age groups, the topics and the grammar. You can use this search uh, very well. For example, you know that you want a book on level three and two because you have beginner uh, learners, but not complete beginners. And uh, you want to teach them adjectives and adverbs. So you look for uh, the level and the grammar and you find all the books that you might need. So basically Booker class is super easy to, um, to adjust to any curriculum that you might be using. And then if you want to have even more activities, then you can look for activity tips. We have this here, books with activity tips, uh, where you find a lot of additional exercises uh, Domi, feel free to jump in here to explain what an activity yeah. tip is. <laughs> yes, so here on the first page, you would see some um, details on the book 
what is the vocabulary focus, the grammar structures we use in a certain story and the focus of the games. And then we give you ideas how to make the books uh, further or how to use the books further because uh, reading a book and doing the exercises is one thing, but we, how we imagine Booker class being used in the classroom is to incorporate it into your daily life. So you can grab a story and create a project work based on that certain topic or start practicing uh, the vocabulary. And we also include uh, printables for all of our activity tips what you can bring into your students and do some offline things uh, on paper. So this one is a, a sheet with different animals. Uh, and I think, yes, the first one is animals. The second one are uh, objects and the third ones are names. So you have to match these. Uh, that's a game. And the other one is uh, who is your superhero? What are their characteristics? and describe that person. So this is a, a writing focused task because that book was about uh, inner and uh, external uh, characteristics. Thank you. And you can find many of these in, uh, in the teacher's dashboard. I think King goes back, but I think I will just quickly wrap up this, uh, this part, especially if, because I want to confirm that she's uh, good. Uh, just to briefly show you the statistics, which is another very useful part, and what I hear from teachers is that they love this part because they can kind of verify if the students are doing what they are supposed to do. Uh, so in the statistics, what we saw uh, quite a bit uh, at the beginning, uh, here you can see also detailed statistics of how many books the kids finished, how many they started, um, and then you can also go into more uh, detailed personal statistics as well. And then last but not least, we really wanted to mention uh, the teacher's handbook, Domi. Yes, this is what we are really proud of because this is a 328 pages long document. We put all our knowledge and hearts in it. Uh, we created this handbook to support teachers uh, who want to introduce storytelling based education into their uh, English lessons and who wants to use Booker class. So in the first few play pages, you will find some uh, information on the application. Uh, let, let's just, let me just answer the question. Yes, this handbook is free to download. You can download it from our website. I think someone will uh, insert the link in the chat. So in the first uh, few section, you will see some uh, um, instruction how to download and things like that. Then a little bit of uh, methodology, uh, storytelling in class, what do the experts say about this method. Then we introduce the levels in our books. Uh, what, what do we mean? How are they aligned with the common European framework of reference? And then we give you some tips on implementation, how to use it for differentiation, how to use it for uh, uh, 21st century skill development or communicative skill development. Uh, and then uh, we introduce all of our levels. Uh, what can you find on that certain level? And we picked two books from each of the levels and created three lesson long lesson plans. Our main goal with this was to give you uh, an insight how we imagined Booker class being used in the classroom. So you can do a lot of things with, with these books. So this one, Wiggling Veggies, is about vegetables. That's a very important first topic. And here, as you can see, we put all kinds of uh, activities focusing on cooperation, for example, some memory cognitive skill development. You will find uh, group work there, pair work, project work, uh, focusing on different skills. And then differentiation tips and add-ons. And my favorite part as a psychologist, mm -hmm. the self-evaluation part, where we ask our students how confident they are with their knowledge, uh, how, how they feel uh, after each lesson. This is always uh, tailored around one fun activity. This one is how full is your basket? Is it empty? The knowledge basket. Is it empty? 
are you like so so i learned some words but i'm not that uh sure or are you confident and you're ready to move forward uh, you showed it the other way around accidentally sorry but <laughs> <laughs> i think they will they will understand it and uh, we also created a lot of printables uh you can cut out flashcards here, you will find uh, worksheets, you will find all kinds of supporting materials because uh, we want you to use Booker class and I think you can utilize this material even without using Booker class. So this is something we want to provide for all the teachers around the world. So please try it out, download it and give us feedback. <laughs> And some other materials that are probably useful for you uh, could be uh, the, our blog, for example. Uh, we actually haven't put it on our list, but I just remembered that last week, a nice group of Turkish educators visited us and they congratulated Dominika on her blog post. So it's actually a pretty big uh, deal. Let me try to find it for you. So on our website, you find a blog where you can read about a lot of uh, topics that are trending right now that are, that are important uh, for education. It's Mental Health Month, for example, in May. So you can read about that. You can read about CLIL, what we talked about, Chat GPT in education. That's also a topic that cannot uh, really be avoided anymore. Uh, we also have a lot of resources here that are useful for you. Here you see the teacher's handbook download, but also, uh, another relatively new series is the month by month uh, printables collection. So you can also download these uh, for free from our website and it includes printables, ideas. It includes a little calendar uh, with, uh, with uh, important dates uh, of the month or special topics yeah. for the month. Uh, International Day of Pancakes, for example, <laughs> important dates. Who would want to miss that? And yeah. then you can have some great books uh, for it and great downloadables. So these are some of the materials that you can use to enhance and uh, your classes and captivate your students more. Um, yes, I think this is what we wanted to share before uh, moving on to your questions. So let's see what we have in the chat box and Kinga, we still cannot see you, so maybe yeah, because something's wrong with the computer, but I'm here. If I start okay, to go, I'm going to be upside down. So oh. <laughs> oh, I'll, just, wow. I'll, I'll switch it off. I have no idea what happened. I'm really sorry. But I'm here and I'm ready <laughs> for the questions here. and I'm really looking forward to answering them. Very good. Thank you. So first of all, uh, I would like to answer Salish's question uh, that I kind of answered already, if this is for all grade levels. So as we said, it's from kindergarten to eighth grade. Uh, however, take a look at it, download the app, uh, try, uh, try it with the free trial, and you can just check yourself for what levels uh, it's appropriate for you. Certificate of attendance. We did not plan it this time, but if you really need it for any reason, shoot a message to us and then we can definitely uh, sort it out. And now we actually collected a few questions from the sheet. So I would like to go to that one now um, because I think they are quite interesting to be covered. So we received a lot of questions about attention, captivating attention, keeping on attention for a longer term. Uh, so Kinga, I know that you have a couple of uh, ideas on how to captivate attention for a long period. Yes, tested <laughs> uh, in our in uh, my fourth and sixth graders uh, lessons. Yeah, actually, what I really like about Bukar is that there are so many books on with a very diverse content. Um, so uh, what I like doing is to first let them choose a book for themselves because I think it's very inspiring if they are part of the process yeah. and they feel more motivated to read what they pick instead of me assigning books to them. Or sometimes I offer them two options, two possibilities, and then they can decide. So it works very well. And the second one I really like doing 
is dialogic reading. I'm not sure uh, if uh, you uh, apply it or if you know about it. We have a wonderful little worksheet for you uh, that will be posted in the chat. Uh, dialogic reading is a method to turn reading into a conversation. It has different question types you can apply. And this is what I usually do with my students. I start the book, we look at the cover, we discuss what is in the picture. Then we move on. We, I ask them to guess what is coming. I ask them if they remember what happened on, on the previous pages. So uh, the, the diversity of questions help them engage with it. And um, also uh, the follow-up discussion on what they thought of the story, if they liked the book, who was their favorite character, why the favorite moment of the book. Uh, so there are many uh, possibilities um, that give an opportunity for your students to be engaged and to internalize and to connect with the book and to make the reading session interactive. And what is wonderful about dialogic reading is that there are different questions. Some questions refer to the pictures, some questions refer to uh, what might happen, the guessing game, others refer to the students' feelings. So everybody can participate. And this is wonderful to see in the classroom that there is always a question for everyone. Yeah. And they can answer in their native language. I don't really mind if they are really paying attention because mm -hmm. sometimes it's very hard to to word their feelings or their impressions in the native language but mm -hmm. it really depends on the teacher's preference so actually i really like this uh this question uh answer type of reading and i can see that uh our colleague has already posted the dialogic reading materials so take a look at it it has a lot of useful information in there thank you Thank you. There are one chat, uh, one question in the Q and A. Uh, are there new books added to the library? Yes, we continuously add new books. I think something like one hundred fifty each quarter. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, we have about one thousand books at this moment. Thank you. And Gloria, I will ask uh, or answer your questions in a second. Uh, I think we received something similar. So let's see here. Can one use only Booker class for two lessons lessons per week throughout an academic year without needing any other resources. And Gloria's question is, how many times a week do you suggest to use Booker in school? So let's try to answer these questions all together. Yeah, well, I would say that it really depends on your curriculum. So if you don't have a very strict curriculum or the curriculum uh, or you find the books in our application that are relevant, then you can, of course, just go with Booker class. For example, I didn't like the unit on present continuous in our book, in our textbook. So I picked the book from the application and I use the Arlo and the whole this story for the present continuous. And I actually spent three lessons working with the story, discussing it, doing some worksheets on it and using the activity tips. So, and it covered the whole thing. So I was really happy with it. Uh, but uh, um, so if you have, um, for example, only topics or you, you find the relevant books from the library, that is possible. If you have any that is missing, feel free to uh, write us. And then we, if it's, um, it's really um, needed from, um, I mean, if other others also suggested it, then we might even write a book for you. So there won't be any holes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it really depends on your preferences, but it is possible, especially because some books, even if they are two lo minutes long, then you can still extend them with follow up activities. So I would say yeah, yeah, you can you can use all of your lessons using book car class, or you can designate one lesson, you for example, a Friday or 
I usually use Booker class only for reading for pleasure and for having fun when I have a lesson between uh, one and two o'clock in the afternoon with my underachiever students. So that's a nice way to use the time or spend the time in a useful and meaningful way, but not um, trying to force them to learn and do everything when they are exhausted already. And uh, is there like a minimum time you suggest to use it in a school per week? Well, <laughs> or yeah, minimum. As, what's the what, what's the range? The more a, better, I guess. Yes, as an employee of Booker Class, I would say once a week at least. I mean, it's a it's a really nice reward for after a hard lesson or a hard week. So I would say if you don't use it for actually teaching a grammar or teaching vocabulary, you can use it as a present for your students as a gift, as a reward. So yeah, yeah. once a week. Or you can, sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to add that you can even assign a book for, as a homework. So maybe you're, you ask your students to read one book a week. That is good input that is something to start with and then maybe they will get hooked up on it yeah this is exactly what i wanted to say that if you don't have time to incorporate booker class into your lessons you can always assign books so they can they can read the books at home mm -hmm. so that's uh, some time absolutely so one question in high school, stories might not be the main focus of the curriculum all the time. This part we agree with, and this is why actually we recommend the app to be used up to 14 years old, because also we think that the format doesn't really match their taste anymore, uh, but it continues. The students are studying other genres together with stories, absolutely. So it's not only uh, these kind of books. How can teachers manipulate storytelling in teaching other genres in the curriculum? So, for I'm example, <laughs> sorry. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one, just one comment. Now we're working on a book, which is an advertisement, because we know that these kind of uh, different media for, media formats are also requirements uh, in some language exams. So we try to to put more and more types of text and create stories around them. Kinga, sorry. Yeah, actually, uh, we have stories like the classic folk tales and fiction and nonfiction books, but we also have texts that are rather like encyclopedia entries mm -hmm. and a lot of conversations or so situational dialogues. So we call them stories, we call them books. But actually, there is a diverse um, um, a, array of uh, genres in, in there. And for the uh, older generation, it's less folk tales, more practical conversations and uh, descriptions. But with any follow-up activity, you can actually turn it into something uh, more... Um, uh, relevant for the older ones. So even if you read a story, you can ask them to do a research, do some project-based teaching, um, write an application letter for the person uh, who was very poor and uh, didn't have a job or suggest ideas, what they should do so that you can use the models and uh, make suggestions. So I think that uh, if you have a some creativity, uh, or if you are willing to open the activity tips, I'm sure you will find some ideas that uh, fit mm -hmm. your needs. And just for the record, these uh, ideas that Kinga was just sharing, and I think throughout most of the session, it's not only applicable to Booker class, but really any story that you can find. So find a story that you like, and um, and yes, uh, apply one of the exercises or ideas that, uh, that Kinga was just mentioning. Uh, just a confirmation question to the previous question. Can it be enough for teaching as a, English as a second language? Well, if you if you extend it, so you do the follow up activities, it can. But as it the format itself is rather uh, an input, so it is a text, it is a listening activity, it is a reading activity, and it has some exercises. 
but uh, there is no writing part yet in the application. So that you must add by yourself or with the help of the activity tips. So I think there are some skills that can only be improved with the help of a teacher in the classroom environment. And this is why we suggest you check the teacher um, teacher's mm -hmm. handbook because you have uh, ideas on how to extend one book so that it covers everything the students need to practice. Thank you. Uh, on what dates are the collections published per month and will they come out every month? Yes, they will come out every month and usually they are available in the first days of the month or the last days of the previous month. Uh, but uh, the best is to enter our teacher community that was also shared in the chat. Uh, or maybe even to subscribe to our newsletter because we keep sending these materials out uh, regularly. We already have eight new members in our teachers' uh, community, so... Oh, <laughs> that's really nice. Keep coming. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we have a few minutes left, so let's continue with some questions. Mike from Greece. Hello, by the way. Uh, how do you program the use of Booker class inside the classroom? Let's take this one first and then the devices part. Um, yeah, well, for me, uh, I have some limitations because my students don't all have the smartphones or the internet connection. So I usually use the projector and the teacher's computer and I do it as a whole group activity or a frontal activity. Uh, rarely when uh, enough students have phones and a good internet connection, I let them work in smaller groups or in pairs so that they can have their alone time. And my underachiever students feel better when they can work together and not on their own. So it's, uh, again, a more motivating um, way of learning than forcing them to struggle um, individually. Uh, so I really like the smart board projector combination uh, and you can download the application to any device, which is actually uh, was uh, requested from from you teachers. Mm -hmm. So now it's available everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so optimal devices, uh, Android and iOS smart uh, phones and tablets, uh, Windows and Mac computers from the stores. You can also use it on uh, touch screens or smart boards, interactive panels, whatever they are called in uh, in your uh, country. I feel like they have so many names. Uh, projector, and there's even a browser-based version for those who don't have any of these devices that I just listed. So Booker Class is kind of device agnostic uh, and you can use it everywhere. And... Yes, a last question about exams, uh, because we know that many of you are aiming uh, for exams and making your students as successful as possible at these. So how to better prepare students for writing, especially story based on pictures? As for the KET exam, I think Kinga, you will be able to help me on this one too. Yeah, um, uh, I would say that if uh, you read stories, you will internalize uh, the way of telling stories. So that is one thing, it is accidental learning, it is acquisition. The more you read, the better you will be at telling stories. That's one thing uh, that we provide the quality input for that. The other one is really the extra practice you can do. So if you have a book like Hua in the Forest, we have just watched, you can, ask your students to turn it into their own edition. So you can ask them to retell the story or modify the story and write their own version, or you can uh, add some follow-up activities uh, that are writing uh, so that they, they prepare better um, for exams. But uh, yeah, it, the question is uh, for me a bit vague. I'm sorry if I couldn't answer it in more detail but write me uh, or or give extra information and then i will be able to extend i think it was very good thank you thank you so much for answering the questions for asking the questions and for being here uh we received a lot of really nice messages and comments you received all the links 
So we are super happy to welcome you in the teacher community where we will post all the materials. Uh, and on the blog as well, you find a lot of useful information. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, and just keep following us because we come back with these webinars every once in a while and we really want to share some interesting insights and findings with you regularly. So thank you all thank you so much and thank hope you. to see you soon. See you Bye -bye. in the teachers community. Yes.